Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode number 47 of the Beginner to Master Speed Run. I am coming into today, rated 1742, on a win streak of 144 games. So let's try and keep it going, uh, and I'll hop into the first game. Okay, first opponent playing Don Bishop, 612, rated 1785. And it looks like my opponent is playing some sort of a Pierce defense. Um, I think this is called the check Pierce. Um, although chess.com is calling it the rat defense. So yeah, usually against an opening like this, I like to just develop naturally. Um, but there are a few different approaches for white. Uh, I could play g3, bishop g2. I could play like bishop e3, queen d2, maybe be a bit more aggressive, also in f3. Um, I think I'll just play in a traditional sense, knight f3, and um, expecting was expecting bishop to g7. But with bishop g4, I can play a move bishop c4. And I'm already setting up ideas of bishop takes f7 and knight g5, but okay, black's not allowing it. So, I mean, this does look really nice for white. <laughs> After six moves, I have full central control, a lot of things developed. Black has pretty much nothing developed except pawns. Um, but with e6, black is threatening to play pawn e f or pawn d5, get my bishop. And I don't think there's much I can do about it. So, I mean, I could play d5 myself, but then mm, takes and takes and e5. Like, I don't want to commit my pawn to d5, which then blocks a bishop. Also opens up this diagonal a bit. So I'm just going to castle. More flexible move. Yeah, bishop to g7. Still considering this, this move pawn d5. Like it's an attempt to open the center. Takes, just not sure about takes, takes, and then e5. Like I have bishop b5, knight to d7 there. So, I mean, another idea is to try and prepare e5. Like rook d1 or knight e2, the first moves that come to mind is simply defending the d4 pawn. Hmm. Also looking for ways to sacrifice the pawn. Like bishop f4 is kind of interesting. Bishop f4, bishop takes d4, and then rook d1. It does look like there's like pretty nice compensation there. Yeah, I'm going to play bishop f4. It's somewhat of a gambit. Trying to bait black into uh, spending time moving the bishop another time. Black does take the pawn. Okay, so rook d1. I mean, a lot of this is like purely intuitive that I have a lot of things developed. And yeah, with this move, pawn e5, it looks like things are under control, defending and attacking. Uh, but this opens up my bishop to target f7. And I'm pretty sure white's completely winning after bishop takes e5. Hitting the bishop, the rook, and threatening checkmate. So yeah, let's go for this. I could have started with bishop takes f7 too, but uh, this looks a bit more direct. And this is checkmate. Okay, so I think my opponent maybe moved a little bit too quickly that game. Um, but hopefully a nice lesson on how to like try and uh, optimize uh, the lead in development from early on and convert that into some advantage. Um, of course, I think my opponent should not have taken this pawn on d4. We can see the eval bar here. It is playable to rook d1, but black has to be really, really careful here. Engine says the best move is queen to f6. And um, yeah, it seems a little bit shaky with the bishop smack in the center. Uh, Stockfish is actually recommending a crazy move from this position for white, which I don't think I would have played. Like, I would have been more inclined to take the pawn on d6, uh, but the top engine move is knight b5, sacrificing the knight after takes, takes. I guess black doesn't have a great way to get out of the check. And there's ideas like if knight c6, there's takes, takes, and e5. Somehow the tactics work really nicely for white. 
uh, e5 hits the queen, the pawn, and the bishop. So, okay, nice, uh, nice game to start the episode. Um, yeah, probably my opponent should have played ninety seven, and then at rook d one, the game would go on. But uh, pleasant opening. So let's keep it going. Uh, let's do another rated seventeen fifty one. Playing Noel Serena. Play another e four. This time we have a Sicilian. And yeah, I think I'll go for a, a delayed Alapin. Um, I played this opening several episodes ago. I mean, we haven't had too many Sicilians in the speedrun so far. A lot of players playing King's Pawn. Um, but now this is a hybrid of like King's Pawn and Sicilian. Um, E5 is it's definitely a playable move, but I can still play D4. Even though black is attacking d4 three times, I have three supporters. And the goal is to open the center, try and develop the minor pieces quickly. Bishop c4 very likely to come, along with knight c3. And I am trying to manage my time as well, like, especially in positions where I have natural moves, natural developing moves. The bishop is pinning my knight. Black is trying to make use of the pin. Okay, queen a5. That's interesting. So, I mean, if I play bishop d2, that obstructs my queen, and I would basically lose a pawn. Pawn takes pawn. Calculating knight d5, but let's look for other options. And there's a move pawn takes e5. And this would likely lead to some interesting trade. Like pawn takes pawn, bishop takes, takes, takes. And it looks like I'm in trouble. It's kind of like a triple attack. But I have bishop d2, saving my rook, blocking the check, hitting the queen. That looks very reasonable. Queen would have to move to some awkward square, like b2 or a3. Another option here is pawn d5, which is maybe a safer approach. I kick the knight, and then, like if takes, takes, black doesn't have time to take, because when I play bishop d2, the queen and knight would be hit. So I guess I have to choose between pawn d5 or um, pawn takes e5, they are the two options. And the more I'm looking at pawn d5, the more I'm liking it. Because I gain space, I keep initiative. I don't think knight d4 is really playable because then I can take. Although maybe it is. Takes, bishop takes c3, there's the in between move. But at the very least, of knight d4, I have bishop d2. So, yeah, I think I'm at a point where I just want to maintain control in the position, make sure that black can't. Uh, exploit the, the battery immediately. An opponent's taking time here, probably deciding between bishop takes c3, knight d4, or knight d7. I think these are the main candidate moves. Um, again, if takes, takes, yeah, the pawn can't really be taken. And then they would get the bishop pair in that line. I mean, knight d4 is by far the most um, complicated move. But black takes. Okay, so I'll take back. Yeah, this pawn is poisonous. Right, knight d4, is this still playable? It's weird. Like, it kind of exploits the fact the pawn is pinned. It feels like there should be something good after knight d4. Like, bishop d2 is solid. Um, 97. Okay. So now this pawn is poisonous. If I take, I, I get triple fort. So I think bishop d2, simply defending, preparing c4, a very natural move. Okay, black repositions a knight, defends a pawn. Yeah, I think this is a case where I just play c4, make the queen retreat, expanding on the queen side. This is a very pleasant opening for white. 
And one thing, with the knight on g6, I'm a bit more inclined to play g3, bishop g2. A pawn on g3 does a nice job at restricting the knight. But we'll see where the queen goes. Give queen b6, maybe I can keep attacking it. A queen a3, okay. The queen is uh, just chilling in my territory. I mean, if I really want to, I could offer the queen trade, try and improve my structure. But I'm looking for ways to exploit the queen here. And there's a move h4 that comes to mind to prepare h5 and also maybe setting up rook h3 to attack the black queen. I think that's a little bit too exotic for, for my liking. I'm really kind of liking this queen b3 move because I keep initiative. If takes takes, it's just a very, very solid position. I'll have one nice pawn island and, and the half open a file. Yeah, let's go for this. It's one of these risk-free moves. Like if I were to develop the bishop, and first of all, I couldn't play bishop d3. Bishop e2 seemed a little bit slow. So now if black wants to avoid the queen trade, then the queen would have to retreat. But we do trade queens. And I'm not up any material, but I think I have some different types of advantages in the position. In a bit more space in the center, a bit more development. Um, definitely potential on the queen side to hopefully cause black some problems. Pawn b6. So this does perhaps discourage pawn c5. And I'm trying to figure out the, the best way to kind of keep improving. And I'm thinking about starting with h4, simply threatening h5 to try and win this pawn. Yeah, let's start with h4. Have a nice uh, space grabbing move. I think pawn h5 is very likely. Ooh, knight f6. So this does attack e4, but okay, let's calculate. Pawn h5, knight would likely move back to e7, and then I take on e5, and then black takes on e4. And center opens up. I'm going to start with h5 and then probably decide whether I want to take next move. So I could also play bishop d3 to simply defend and then still defend to take next move. I mean, I should note here that I have the bishop pair, and bishops do like open positions. I'm just trying to find a follow up. Like after takes, takes, the bishop's attacked. I play bishop here, d6 comes with tempo. So I'm going to play bishop d3. Really just being solid. And now the benefit to having the pawn here is it can move forward. Maybe induce some weakness in black's position. Thinking of pawn g6, the bishop can sit nicely on g5. I did say that, uh, yeah, bishops like open positions, and like, even though the position is closed down a little bit, I think the bishops still have a lot of potential, because there's ideas of b4, c5 to open the queen side. Uh, there also might be ideas of bishop b4, simply to target the d6 pawn. Like I'm calculating g6, bishop b4, and the only move to defend is king d7. So I'm wondering if I can like, somehow generate tactics after king d7. Not quite seeing it, though. Hmm. Yeah, I don't want to take too much time here. But bishop g5, knight d7. Okay, I'm going to play bishop b4. I think the point is really to create some disharmony in Locke's position. 
Because with the king here, it blocks a knight from maneuvering to perhaps a happier place. Also blocks a bishop. And yeah, maybe I can keep initiative with knight g5 attacking the f-pawn. And I think at this point, I'm really just trying to tie black down. Because now the only way to defend the pawn is to play rook f8. And then the rook will be tied down to this pawn, knight will be tied down to this pawn, and the king will be tied down to this pawn. Um, but the question still remains, do I have any, any way to actually crack box position? Maybe rook h3. Like sometimes in these positions, you have to ask yourself, which piece is doing nothing? And I mean, this is the easiest piece to improve. Uh, this bishop is also doing nothing, but uh, yeah, it's kind of the case when my center pawns are on light squares. But yeah, the prospect of rook f3 looks really, really nice. To pressure the knight, and then the knight is kind of pinned to the pawn. Um, I'm just realizing here, rook f3, knight eg8. And then, yeah, what's my follow-up? Then black wants to play bishop g4. All right, I have to move the rook. I just don't really see a, an amazing follow-up. I'm going to still do it. I mean, it's a tempo move. Knight eg8. Black would be threatening bishop g4 and then eventually taking. So, I mean, even though it looks really good for white, it still requires probably some more precision. Do I have any sacrifices? I sack the exchange. Yeah, Black finds it. I might be losing the pawn, actually. Huh. I do have to watch my time. Bishop e2. Maybe bishop c2, perhaps. Just not seeing anything that appealing. I'm going to play bishop e2. The point is to meet bishop g4 with rook c3. And I think I, I would like to trade off light squared bishops. Now I am like undefending my pawn a little bit, but the, the, the knight on g5 still defends a pawn. And there is a, a line takes, takes. If black wins this pawn, then I can swing either rook back to the h file. I'm also looking for opportunities on the queen side. Hmm. I could play f3. I could play f4 maybe. Okay, I'm going to start with this. Although, uh, there, there. Maybe f3 first. And if I want to put a rook on h-file, then I can play rook h1. Okay, let's play rook h1. Yeah, black's done a good job to uh, defend, try and keep things together. But I think it's likely I'm going to win back the pawn. Hopefully still have a preferable position. Yeah, let's take. Although, I could take with knight as well. No, let's take with a rook. Because then I'm threatening rook takes f7. If that pawn moves, I have knight e6 with a fork. Now I can probably take with the rook on f7. I don't think my knight is getting stuck. Actually, if takes takes, I'll be threatening to win the pawn on d6. 
a5. Okay, so now I have the fork. Um, yeah, let's start with this. Still a little bit weird after king b7. So my bishop and rook are attacked. But it should be good. Like, I can take... I can take on f8 first. And then if takes, I take here. Both rooks are hanging, but black can only take one at a time. I'm getting very low on time, so... Uh, yeah, let's just rely on intuition. Calculating rook takes f8. Knight takes f8, also playable. But now I can take here. It still looks very good for white. I'm up two pawns. E pawn should be falling. Now let's bring... Might as well bring the rook back. A4 might happen. Looking at A4, B4 to prepare C5. So A4, B4, A3, C5, A2. I mean, whenever A2 happens, I'll, I'll have rook A1. But yeah, here I'm setting up the fork. Oh, I also have, like, if king c8, I can take, if king takes, I take here, the bishop helps cover the queening square. Also, I just one connect five. Yeah, very uh, aesthetic pawn chain. Maybe some connect six potential, although probably not. So yeah, let's take with check. And, oh, that's actually double check, so... Expecting king digs d7. I mean, there's only two legal moves here. And this is nice. So I'm taming the, the a pawn. Bishop also attacks knight. Not sure if I'm threatening rook. Well, now definitely not rook c7. Um, let's just expand. And this should be plenty of time to convert the advantage. I think the, the simple plan is to keep walking up. I mean, if I really want to, I could blockade the pawn. Um, but no need. Looking at knight d6. I think if knight d6, I have a... Forcing line, rook c7, king e8, knight g7, king f8, I take with check. I should also point out the bishop is really nice, uh, basically completely restricting the knight. Black wants to play rook b1, so now it's probably time to blockade, attack the pawn. If rook takes b4, would threaten rook e4. So I'll move up the king. Yeah, even when you're winning, you still want to be very aware of what the opponent wants to do. It's usually the first thing you should ask yourself is, what does the opponent want to do? How can things go wrong? Here I'm just looking to escape the checks. Rook b4. Okay, let's start pushing this pawn. If rook b4, I would have played king g5. Um, this game definitely went the full distance, though. And we're both uh, quite low on time. But still keeping things controlled. I'm going to try and checkmate before my opponent flags. This and this would be checkmate. Although, okay. Opponent flags. So, yeah, well-fought game. Um, I mean, I really like the position out of the opening. 
it seemed like the middle game was very much in my favor. But then at some point, yeah, my opponent defended against my threats. And then I maybe was worse. Maybe it was like equal at some point. Take a look here. Uh, yeah, queen a5. Uh, aggressive move. d5 was a fine response. Yeah, it looks like d5 or d takes e5 are, are very fine for white. And yeah, going forward here. Engine says some some other things rather than queen b3. Uh, there is rook b1, which I didn't quite consider. It does maybe give the a pawn, but also sets up bishop b4. Yeah, this is a bit more aggressive. I was trying to play like a, a solid positional game. And for a while, yeah, that was the case. I'm really curious if I had anything better than what I did. I played rook h3, and apparently this wasn't the best idea. The engine is actually saying a, a surprising move here, which I think briefly crossed my mind, but I didn't want to like complicate things. Um, apparently the best move is pawn f4. And then if pawn takes f4... I don't fully understand that the engine is now saying bishop e2. I mean, this is one of these positions where the engine just spits out like a, a weird sequence based on some deep calculations. I guess the point is to eventually castle and win back the pawn. Don't fully understand. I guess castling immediately is also fine. Okay, maybe I do understand is that, yeah, we just want to like temporary sack a pawn and then use the F file. And perhaps it's a bit more effective than lifting the rook where it ended up being a bit awkward from f3 as we saw in the game when black threatens bishop g4 my rook had to leave the f-file and now okay the engine, say, the engine says i should have played c5 here which i did not consider at all um the point being if takes bishop a5 check the king's a target if king b7 bishop b5 and yeah, white has actually very, very good compensation, practically winning for white. Yeah, that would have been beautiful, actually. If pawn takes, d takes c5, there's bishop c3 to target this. Yeah, not always easy to consider these sort of like very concrete engine ideas. But I think what happened in the game, it was still, still solid, uh, even though... Yeah, the engine does prefer black after black won the pawn. I was pretty quickly able to um, get the tactics. And yeah, once I won material, it was pretty smooth from here. So, okay, nice game. Hard fought game, much longer game than the first. Uh, let's do one more. New opponent playing Harvinder Pal Singh, rated 1723. And. Um, let's play a Sicilian. I encountered the Sicilian in the previous game. And, I mean, it's not an opening I think I've played yet in the speedrun. But I did start experimenting with playing the Sicilian when I was younger. Maybe uh, shortly before I reached um, like the 2000 level. Now, here I'm just playing uh, one of the most common setups. Um, this is... A dragon setup, but it's not the typical um, open Sicilian because white hasn't played d4. With c3, white is probably preparing pawn d4. And now I do have a decision to make. I, mean, I could play in a similar fashion to what my previous opponent did. Let's move pawn e5. And with this move, I would be controlling d4 four times. Yeah, let's go for this. And there are cases where very often when you play the dragon, you don't want to be playing pawn e5 blocking your bishop. Um, but because this is a more closed position, I think it's okay to just have the pawn here. And I'll develop the knight to e7. Um, sometimes the knight goes to f6, but in this case, I want to make sure my f pawn is not blocked. Because uh, very likely in the middle game, I'll look to castle and play f5. 
It's one of the main plans for Black is to expand on the king side. Now, debating whether to play f5 right away. A little bit uncertain about f5, queen b3, king h8, knight g5. Looks a little weird. But there would be some issues with the queen and knight coordinating. There's also ideas for white of playing like queen d2, bishop h6. So I'm going to play a very kind of standard move for this position is h6. And this stops all these sort of knight g5 ideas. And it also prepares to meet queen d2 with king h7, preventing any uh, potential bishop trade. White plays b4. Okay. Interesting. So attacking the pawn twice. I think I'll just play b6. Reinforce the pawn. And if b5, then a knight could either move to a5 or back to b8 and then reposition to d7 eventually. I mean, I would really like to play f5 as quickly as possible now. So this prospect of f5, and if I can get in f4 and g5, it can lead to a really nice attack on the king side. But if I play f5 here, I do lose a pawn. So let's just defend. That's very, very typical for these sort of uh, dragon positions or any opening really when you fiend cato the kingside bishop and white creates this battery. Uh, this is a very solid setup. A knight can't really come in. And I'm still looking to expand. So I'm not quite sure what to expect from white. I mean, there's one minor piece undeveloped for white, but it has no legal moves. So white plays d4, a very confrontational move. Now there's four supporters, but also four attackers. So um, I won't be winning anything. Um, if I want to be crazy, I could still maybe play f5. So f5 would threaten to trap the bishop, f4. There's a lot to calculate. I could also take once, like takes, takes, and then a five. I'm not sure about f5 takes, and if I take back with pawn, then this pawn is loose. So I'm a bit more inclined to take once and then play f5. It does kind of help white get the square for the knight. I'm just not sure what else to do. Yeah, let's take once. Now f5. And this could lead to some trade, like takes, if I take with pawn, we trade queens. I think everything is pretty well supported there. I am threatening to trap the bishop. And there's also the idea, like if white takes, I could take with a knight and then try and exploit the diagonal. Oh, there's also takes and then I can take counterattacking. Okay, but white takes with a pawn on f5. Interesting. And I have four different recaptures. And knight takes, I think, is most natural. And the position is very much transforming. We went from pretty close center to a center that's just completely opening up. Imagine this pawn tension will be relieved at some point. And with the position opening up, um, I mean, one reason why I took with the knight is I would probably like to get the bishop pair. If I can eventually take on e3, then my dark square bishop won't really have a counterpart. And this bishop doesn't really have anywhere to run or hide. And maybe we'll see d5, okay. 
So if I take, could take or play knight ce7. I mean, there's also e4, but does e4 have merit? I hit the rook. e4 might just win material. Because e4, if takes, I, let's say I take here first, takes, takes. It's messy, though, because there's c7 in the end. And then that hits my rook and queen. I mean, there's also, um, after takes, I could take the rook first. But then the pawn gets to c6. Yeah, that's a critical moment. So e4 takes, takes. Let's say knight d4, we trade. Why has compensation there? I'm going to be safe. I feel like there were a lot of ways that could have backfired if White were able to support the pawn. Um, definitely something to analyze after the game. But with here, everything is pretty well defended. And I can still take. Uh, which... I mean, the drawback of taking is takes and then e4 might happen. But let's go for this. So I like the idea of takes, I can play knight f5. And then there's ideas of knight g3. There's also ideas of e4, I can play knight d4 perhaps. But this is still very much of a, a fight. I mean, white has more space in the center. And do I really want to go for knight g3? Probably don't want to take on e2. Yeah, knight g3 looks a little bit more attractive. Maybe I'll try and build up some pressure on the king side. The question is how, though. Bishop takes h3. Maybe just start with bishop d7. Not the most exciting move, but just trying to get my pieces to useful squares. Okay, I mean, rook takes f3 or bishop takes h3. Both look possible. I mean, bishop takes h3 might be a bit cleaner. Calculating this and then queen f2. Hmm. And there's also takes and then queen h4, which I might have a hard time resisting. h4, I win h3. There's queen f2 there. I'm going to go for this. It's one of these uh, intuitive sacrifices. I mean, I'm guaranteeing the king side to open, and the prospect of my queen, knight, bishop, also rook coming in. Oops, what did I do? Oh, what I did there. <laughs> What's happening? How do I? What? I can't. Oh, there. No. What did I do? I have to refresh. Wow, that was a weird bug. I've never seen that before. It's like the the board resize thing just got stuck to my mouse. I think I was trying to draw the arrow from my uh, from the corner and I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. So queen h2. Okay, let's try and stay focused here. Um, rook f8. Yeah, I don't want to be too quick to take the pawn. Because then I, I would walk into a pin. So I just want to keep building a pressure. There's an idea h5 and then bishop e3, which looks quite nice. 
yeah, this bishop was my worst piece blocked by the pawn, but if it comes to h6, it might turn into one of my best pieces. Hit the rook, plant itself on f4. Okay, white's trying to attack on the queen side. But now bishop h6, attacking the rook. Yeah, all my pieces look really, really nice here. If rook moves back, I can probably just take on f3. I'm leaving d6 attacked, but I'm making bigger threats. And rook e1 is the only way to save the rook. And it's possible white might look for a way to give, mac give back material to try and survive. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if we see rook e1. I mean, if rook e1, I might not take the rook. Like Bishop f4 looks quite attractive. But actually, okay, yeah, well, white doesn't go for that. So if I take on f3, I'm attacking the bishop. The bishop's tied down to defending the knight. I'm also probably setting up bishop e3. And there's just going to be way too many attackers. Like white's, I think, going to be completely overwhelmed. I mean, usually when there's more attackers than defenders, then... Good things happen for the side that's attacking. Yeah, I don't really see a great option for white. Bishop f2, okay. Or bishop uh, f1, I should say. So I have ways to win back material. I mean, taking is probably simplest. Yeah, taking looks nice. Because I remove the defender of the knight. Uh, but more importantly, I'm setting up rook g3, which I think just wins the queen by force. There's also bishop e3. Just have to choose how I want to convert this. Yeah, if the king moves here or here, I win the queen with rook takes h3. And it might already be force mate. Calculating king to, king to f2. I might be able to throw in bishop e3 check. King e2, I take the knight with check. And here I'll, uh, I'll clean up the king side. Okay, that was a nice game. Um, nice attacking game. It was definitely a pretty hard fought middle game. And an opening where I probably didn't have much of an advantage. Uh, but let's go back. Let's analyze a bit. Yeah, my opponent just played kind of their own thing. Uh, didn't really contest the center until later. And yeah, it's one of these things when you play the Sicilian, sometimes you just want to do your own thing as well. And I employed this, um, I think this is called the Bafinic setup. Uh, there's an opening called the Bafinic English, which features the same idea but reverse, we basically develop like this and control the center nicely. So going forward, um, yeah, I was hesitant to play this uh, this f5 move, although maybe this was not anything to be afraid of. King h8, knight g5, I would have had queen e8, and black is, is doing fine. But okay, h6 I think is also very fine b4, b6, and yeah, here, I mean, it's one of these positions where if it was a slower classical game, I'd pr probably take like several minutes to figure out what to do just with all the pawn tension. Um, Engine is, is spitting out an idea that I did not consider at all, is to take with the e-pawn, and after takes back, play d5, which is very interesting. Diagonal opens, and yeah, there's still a ton of pawn tension. Like these positions can be very hard to kind of navigate through all the chaos. But sometimes the most important thing is just to ensure that like things are well defended. So the line that I chose still seemed very solid. Like f5 and e5 had a lot of support. And yeah, what happened in the game? 
looked very fine. And the engine does say that e4 is the best move. And I did spend some time to calculate this. Um, I just wasn't like totally sure about this line. Takes, because if takes here, takes, I would win the rook and then there's c7. And it just seems like a big mess. Like bishop takes a8. Ah, okay. So there, there is a, kind of a final tactic in the end. And black seems to be getting the last laugh. Is in this position, bishop a6. Attacking the rook and the bishop. I didn't calculate that far. I basically stopped my calculation after I saw c7. So it's another case where if it were a slower game, I'd probably dig deeper and maybe be able to find that sequence. But um, yeah, I chose a safer route. Knight e7, this does relinquish most of the advantage. But um, yeah, it led to a, a nice attacking middle game. Got the knight on g3. And yeah, when bishop d3 was played, I, I seized the opportunity to sacrifice. And rook takes f3 is actually the top engine move. Um, I was briefly considering bishop takes h3 to try and exploit the fact that a pawn on g2 is overworked. Um, but I spotted the move queen f2, which defends the knight, threatens to take, and also threatens to take the knight on g3. And this would not be as good, um, especially compared to what happened in the game. So takes, takes, and yeah, the play just flowed really nicely from here. I think this is just a, a nice, instructive attacking sequence, um, especially this move pawn h5. Like usually when you're attacking, you should... You should treat it like a birthday party. Just invite all your friends to the party. In this case, all the all the pieces were having a good time. And yeah, everything just crumbled for white. So I think this is a nice game to uh, finish the episode on. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed this episode. As always, if you like the content, do subscribe. It does help the channel. And if you have questions, leave them below. Look forward to reading the comments. And I'll see you guys soon.